Greetings, people of Earth, or at least the four of you people that actually watch these videos. Um, Crazy Cosmo here. Um, and I've been doing a lot of thinking lately about with the new Star Wars movies coming out. And maybe I want to go back and rewatch the original three. Well, I, I know there are six, but I really don't like to count the first three movies. Um, we give George Lucas a lot of crap for those three movies. And in large part, we give him crap for one of the worst characters, as voted by all Star Wars fans, put together, Jar Jar Binks, right? Uh, we all thought he was stupid. We all thought he was extremely overplayed and extremely dumb, for lack of a better term. Um, but just for a minute, just for the sake of argument and just for a little bit of fun, let's turn things on its ear for a second. Let's take Jar Jar Binks, the character that we all hated, a character that we completely and utterly discounted, and let's think about this. We all attribute stupidity with his character. He screws up. He makes mistakes. He's an idiot. But what if he wasn't? Let's look at this from the very beginning. And I know there are a lot of points that I'm going to forget about, forget about on this. And so any of you other Star Wars fans out there who can help me flesh this out a little bit more or even help refute me, um, feel free to do that too. Um, there's nothing better in my personal opinion than a spirited Star Wars debate. Um, help me out with this. The first appearance of Jar Jar Binks that I recall in Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace was by happenstance when he came upon Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon Jinn on the planet Naboo. Now, we all took that to be an accident, a chance meeting, the Force pushing two people together, but what if it wasn't? What if Jar Jar knew that the two Jedi would be showing up on Naboo because he was told that, because from day one, Jar Jar Binks was working for Emperor Palpatine. At the time, Senator Palpatine, soon to become Supreme Chancellor Palpatine, soon to become Emperor Palpatine. But what if from the very beginning, Jar Jar Binks was placed in the Jedi's path because he knew that the Jedi being selfless, they would take him under their wing, especially with the sob story he made about how big of a screw up he was. I mean, let's be honest, how many people are going to tell you their greatest flaw within the first five minutes of meeting you, even if you are a Jedi? I mean, Jedi mind trick aside, I never, never remember the ability, uh, any of the abilities of the Jedi being forcing another being to tell the truth and to be so forthcoming with it. Um, so we go from there, right? They meet, they, they take pity on this poor beast. And they decide to go with him to meet with Boss Nass. Now, during that time, we get a couple of glimpses of how Gungan culture views Jar Jar. And he is an outcast. Nobody likes him. Nobody wants him around because he makes mistakes. Mistakes that cause damage. Now, if we take that from the other perspective, as in all of this was a carefully orchestrated plan, perhaps we can change the word. Perhaps it wasn't mistakes. Perhaps we could change the word to sabotage. Maybe he got himself thrown out on purpose to create the alibi for later on so that the Jedi would have more reason to take pity. I mean, let's keep moving on here. Think about the great battle of Naboo. We see several different instances where Jar Jar screws up, yet somehow manages to screw up in exactly the right manner to cause massive amounts of damage to the other army. I mean, he trips, falls, and opens the back of a boomer wagon and lets all the ammunition go out onto the field, killing dozens upon dozens of battle droids. And we look at it and we laugh and we think it's a Keystone Cops episode and we allow it to reinforce what we already believe. We already believe he's an idiot because he told us he was from the start. Now, continuing on in that same fight, we see another sequence where he supposedly screws up, where he gets caught in a battle droid. I mean, seriously, getting your foot stuck in a battle droid. Now, I can understand how you could make that mistake in the heat of battle. However, what I don't understand is how you somehow find the exact way to get the right wire wrapped around your foot that when you kick it, he, kicks, he happens to fire the blaster. And I also don't understand how you then accidentally shoot multiple targets while trying to hide from them. Now, that's just episode one. And that's not really, I can't guess, I guess I can't say that it's full on evidence because a lot of it is supposition, but 
I think there's a little bit too much to ignore, especially when you then look into episode two, when he's now become a senator, right? Because of his contributions to the Battle of Naboo, contributions we just talked about, which are supposed to be looked at as mistakes, but everybody else sees what they are. They are heroic deeds, yada, yada, yada. So what do they do? They make him a senator. And then it comes time to give the, the chancellor supreme power. The, uh, was it executive, whatever they call it. Who is it? Who does it? Jar Jar. This guy who is a total idiot, who everybody makes fun of in the first movie, yet somehow turning, helping to turn the tide of one battle gives us enough faith in this guy that we make him a senator. Yeah, even 10 years later, I'm sorry, he still acts the same way. So from my personal perspective, we could look at Jar Jar as a really interesting uh, version of a deep cover operative. He plays the patsy. He plays the fall guy. He makes himself look like he's no threat long enough to get himself in the right position to do what he was supposed to do from the very beginning, which was to help Emperor Palpatine become Emperor Palpatine. Now, I'm sure there's a lot more evidence in there that we could find either for or against what I'm saying here, but it's an interesting thing to ponder, isn't it? I mean, we all want to say that George Lucas, yeah, he created this, the, the new Star Wars movies for kids. He created them for his kids in particular is what I've heard that he, he didn't have the same edge that it was too cartoony. Well, maybe some of that was intentional, um, at least in the possibility of Jar Jar Binks being a deep cover operative. I mean, it's definitely something worth looking into, don't you think? So, um, hopefully somebody watches this and if it either galvanizes you to talk to a friend about it or something, please pass this along. Send me some comments, argue back with me, shoot me a video if you want to, because that's why I'm doing these things because I can't be the only one who's seeing things like this. So, um, hopefully I'll hear back from you guys. Uh, till next time.